Clutch Cow Raleigh, big dumper, always comes through. Now this video is going to be about the clutchness of what Cow's been doing, but it's also just about the Mariners finding a way, again, 39 and 30, getting a couple games above 500, well, nine games above 500, with two left against the White Sox. But Cal Raleigh said something that was very interesting. It's better to be dumb hitter than a smart one sometimes. And the quote is not exactly that, but I'm going to read it to you so I don't get it completely wrong. Sometimes being a dumb hitter is better than being a smart hitter. It's a real thing. And the reason that he said this was based off of what I'm reading on MLB.com by Daniel Kramer, that the Mariners pointed out to Cal Raleigh in his approach that he needs to be more aggressive on 3-0 counts, which he did in last night's game winner against the White Sox, or his go-ahead hit, not necessarily a game winner like the night before where he had the Grand Slam. But being more aggressive on 3-0 counts. Now, for some people, 3-0 counts could be a situation where, you know, you're trying to be a smart hitter, take one, only swing if it's the perfect pitch. But this is why he's saying being more aggressive, sometimes being a dumb hitter is better than being a smart hitter. You try to make a play when the play is available to you. And that's what Cal was doing there. And that gives Cal his seventh inning go-ahead double last night. And remember, his grand slam walk-off in the ninth the night before was his sixth go-ahead or game-tying hit in the seventh inning or later this season, tied for most in the MLB. And let me just break that down one more time. We're 69 games into the season. Today's the 70th, if you're watching this after today's Wednesday game. He has six go-ahead or game-tying hits in the seventh inning or later this season tied for the most in the MLB I mean first of all it's already hard enough to have go ahead or game tying hits in the major leagues and to have six of them 69 games into the season on pace to what hit almost uh, 12 18 game hitting or go ahead hits game winning or go ahead hits in the seventh or later to be on pace for almost having nearly 20 of those is a ridiculous stat. He's probably not going to get to 20 realistically if we're being honest, but it's a ridiculous stat nonetheless. So the Mariners are finding ways to rally. Now it hasn't been pretty. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. I think we were down four, one to the white Sox in the eighth, the other night it took three runs, including a sacrifice bunt single, not a sacrifice, a, a bunt single, by Luke Rayleigh that scored the game tying run and then it took the grand slam walk off by Cal Raleigh in the in the ninth inning. So I mean what seven eight all eight actually it was four one before the other place. So it was actually four nothing. So eight runs in two innings to beat the White Sox. The seventeen and fifty White Sox I think they are now or seventeen and fifty one. It took eight runs in the eighth and ninth inning. And then last night was somewhat of the same thing. It felt like the offense was dead. Obviously, Jonathan Diaz had his first game uh, as a Mariner, as a, and he was, you know, coming in for the scratch start by Brian Wu. And you know, he was pitching okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't say he had a phenomenal day, and he didn't have a bad day either. But at the end of the day, the Mariners' bats weren't waking up until they finally did again in the sixth, seventh, eighth inning. Like that's always what they're doing now—chaos ball. And it took another Cal Raleigh double to do something special for this team and win the game now this is what's fun about this team and can be frustrating at times so clutch cow right it's a real thing he is that guy he's clutch he makes the right plays at the right moments and he makes big plays and this team kind of does the same thing it's chaos ball it's mariners baseball it's something that's hard to figure out because you play against a team like the 17 and 59 White Sox and you say, uh, you know, I said 59 or 17 and 49 or 17 and 50 White Sox. And you think if you're a good baseball team, you should finally go out there and win three out of four or four out of four. I know a lot of people say sweep, sweep, sweep. It's Major League Baseball. Sometimes people win games, including the Chicago White Sox. OK, like you're not you can't expect to sweep every bad team that you play. We lost a game to the Athletics. You can lose a game to the White Sox. But you see this series and you say, you should go take three or four out of four, right? And then you have these first two games 
on the first game, I'm like, all right, we lost. Like, it's, you know, 4-0 in the eighth. I can't believe we're going to drop the first game of the White Sox. Yesterday, I'm like, okay, looks like this is probably the one we're going to drop to them. Hopefully, we can win the next two and, you know, keep it at three out of four. But somehow, at the end of the game, they keep doing it. And it's not just Cal Raleigh, which he is the, like, he's clutch Cal. He's the guy that's doing this. He's the guy that has been just making that extra play that's been sensational. But you've just noticed the whole team's rallying at the right times. J.P. Crawford, Luke Rayleigh with the bunt. Julio's been getting some timely hits. There's been a lot of timely play. There's been the bullpen showing up when it needs to, even though it's banged up, even though it's not very good right now. It's not, you know, the, who was it we were looking at? It was the Matt Brash, Gregory Santos, um, with Munoz, all of them right now. Like yesterday, it's Stanek come in. Munoz is banged up. Santos hasn't played yet. Brash is out for the year. So for not having any of that, what we expected to be in the position we're in right now, it's unbelievable that this team is rallying late nights with the bats, late in games with the pitching and figuring out the bullpen one way or another. This team is clutch. They win today. They'll be at 40 and 30. They could be somewhere, you know, in that six to seven game range above the Rangers and somewhere between that seven and eight game range above the Astros. But that's why you take advantage right now. Take advantage of the White Sox. Win one of the next two for sure. Win three out of four and start building a big 10 game above 500, you know, situation. Build a big lead in the division and you got games against Texas coming up. If you can win some of those games, all of a sudden, There's a huge division in the standings, and that's what we want, and that's what we need. So shout out Clutch Cal, shout out the Mariners, and just keep winning ballgames. I don't give a damn how it's done. Just keep winning.